I'd like to see Joshua uh, have a new trainer, drop all the hangers on, you know all them that are walking around with him, all they do all day is just sit around. I mean I, I, I remember when Robert McCracken wouldn't let anybody go up to EIS, he didn't want Carl Froch taking everybody up there and all his mates and blah de blah and everybody else, you need to work, it's not a bull, it's, it's not a youth club. Robert McCracken used to go around saying it's not a youth club. If your mate worked on a building site, you wouldn't want to be on a building site with him, would you? No, you wouldn't, but a building site ain't going to have somebody that's famous there and on telly and in boxing fights world champion, is he? Who want to go to a building site? Of course, people who want to go to EIS, but Joshua, his entourage just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, hasn't it? And all these people want pain, so I kind of have a little bit of sympathy for Anthony Joshua, sympathy. Carl Frost didn't don't have hangers on around him. He didn't have, Mark Kayla were a top fighter. He didn't have teams of hangers, hangers on around him. You think Jimmy Tibbs was going to have people with hangers on around him? No chance. Do you know what I mean? Disciplinarian, the old school. You know what I mean? You've got to... Fighters, nowadays, right? They need to drop all these hangers on because all they do, they upset the apple cart. They get into people's ears. They get into your ears, that's what happens. They get into your head and they say things. And what before you know where you are, your fighter, all of a sudden, he wants to do, to do it his way. I mean, all these experts, for example, I'm not a big Joe Gallagher fan, but Joe Gallagher uh, had Scott Quigg, didn't he? And people were getting into, his, into Scott Quigg's ear about, oh, you should be doing this, Scott. You should be doing that. Well, if they were that good, why don't they train Scott Quigg? So Scott Quigg ended up leaving Joe Gallagher, didn't he? Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, uh, as far as I'm concerned, fighters need to get rid of entourages and just listen to, to their own instincts and listen to the trainer a bit more. The trainer's got to have an input because he's got to devise a game plan for who they're going to fight. Now, McCracken's been found wanting, hasn't he, with that Ruiz fight. They only had four weeks to prepare, didn't they? And Ruiz were already half fit, wasn't he? He'll have been ready. He'll have, you, know, you know Ruiz, let me tell you this. Right? I mean, the people are saying, aren't they, now that it was always Andy Ruiz that were the backup guy, right? But Eddie didn't want to disclose that because he, he do not look. He doesn't look like a, an Adonis, does he? Joshua looks like an Adonis, but that don't mean nothing, does it? That don't mean anything, right? That doesn't mean zero. Listen, I had a roll around on the floor in prison when I was 23 years old. I had six pack and lot. I was a gym all the time. I had a roll around with this fat kid on the floor, and it, you know, he overpowered me. Do you know what I mean? I had one with, I had, I had one with my cup, my half cousin. Look at that. Top of ear bits off. Big old fat mush jumping on me. It don't mean six packs don't mean no. And you know, I'm carrying a bit of timber now, 15 stone, but you know, I'm more than capable of going down and slapping somebody with a six pack. You can't put muscles on chin, it's what's in there, it's your heart, isn't it? Now, it is what it is, isn't it? But I want to see Joshua with a new trainer. I want to see him. Right, with a new trainer and a new team around him. I want him to drop all that EIS carry on down there. I want him to go back to what I want him to go back to basics and what he'll do now, he'll go through his Rocky Free mo mo mode now, he'll be out on his motocross, trying to get his head together, he'll be back to see his old trainer. He'll go back to the beginning and he'll say, Where did it all go wrong here? Changes will happen because if he gets beat again and he doesn't change anything well, he's a fool, isn't he? When you get beat, you go back to your drawing board. It doesn't necessarily mean he has to get rid of Robert McCracken because if the referee stops it in round three, there's nothing wrong, is there? There's nothing wrong. It's like if that referee stopped that fight against Tyson Fury in 12th round and, stopped and, and, and Wilder's declared winner, there's no wrong in Wilder's camp, is there? 
But what they'll do, they'll change it. It's like Tyson has changed things up a little bit, hasn't he? He's not, he's not steaming in with Wilder rematch. So they're saying he's going to fight next year, don't they? I'm not so sure about that myself. I am not so sure. For the simple reason, I think that they're going to want to make as much money as they can. Tyson's already a millionaire. He's just going to pile millions up. He's already got all belts anyway. But if they do give us that Wilder fight, again, Tyson and Wilder, well, pfft. could you imagine if Tyson beats Wilder, and if Wilder beats Ruiz, Tyson beats Wilder, if Tyson ends up with every belt, all five belts, a ring magazine belt, can you imagine Eddie Hearn having to go capping on to Tyson? Oh my God! Can you imagine that? And who's to say that Yui Fury's not going to be in mix now? Who's to say that? Because I had you beating Parker and Parker beat Ruiz. So I look at you like this. There's a good angle there to sell a fight against Ruiz, isn't there? Yui Fury could be in the mix. I'm telling you now, he needs another couple of quick wins. Yui needs a couple of quick wins and he is in the mix. Let me tell you now. But I don't what I don't see is Clarissa Shields. Stopping crying because she's obsessed by Joshua, isn't she? Crying like that. Thinking of yourself. You're not thinking about Joshua. It's a sport. People get knocked out. You can't go in the shower and, and not get wet. Do you know what I mean? Did Eddie Hearn get greedy? Yes, he got very greedy. Anthony Joshua, very lucky or elite. Is Anthony Joshua elite? Well, he's still a world class fighter. Is he an elite world class fighter? No, he is now in the, he's a world class fighter. But there's a difference between a world class fighter and an elite world class fighter, isn't there? All right, I think Joshua was a world class fighter masquerading as an elite fighter because he is not number one. No more in there, everywhere. He's lost his number one box rec. I don't know what he is today on box rec. But uh, I'd say he's not number one. Uh, so, what have we been sent here? What have we been sent here? Exclusive, Deontay Wilder reacts to Anthony Joshua getting knocked out. Let's see what this is. Let's see what this is, I'll let you have a treat here. when I can work my phone. Oh, it's 22 minutes. interview on Se Wilder's interview is on 78 Sports TV 78 Sports TV the Anthony it was a Wilder interview about Anthony Joshua no mass Anthony Joshua ended up doing I don't like to say Oara Davis because I like Oara Davis and I've, I've got a soft spot for him but Oara did quit against uh, Josh Taylor Kelbrook quit against Errol Spence, but we shouldn't really criticise boxers for quitting, but because we're not in there taking the punches. But Joshua, where's the savage? As Terry Chapman does, where's the savage? Where's the fucking bad man? Where's the bad man quitting like that? Yeah, you did quit, and people who say he's quit are out of order. Well, I'm saying is, well, I'm saying that he quit. So I'm going to go on record now and say it. you just got to say what you think. He quit. He had it put him on him, on him and he will quit. He's a manufactured guy. Manufactured. He was manufactured. 
no ifs, no buts about it. He's had a good run and they've, they've, they've milked it with all these blue chip companies, 14 sponsors. 14 sponsors, right, paying Joshua £10 million a year, plus a private jet and free hotels, free everything. Not just talking about a free, pair, of, pair of free trainers like what I get and trackies and stuff like that. Never know, could be a free Rolex one day. Keep watching channel. But, I'm telling you now, right, Joshua milked it. And they've lowballed everybody, they've trampled over everybody, they've been shouting, oh, we're not taking 50 million, have you got the money? Blah de blah. When they make offers to people, the people say, can we see money in bank? Uh, or put it in escrow and all that account. Who the fuck do they think they are at Matchroom? Right? This has been coming, and you know what? It's only going to get worse now. And they're going to have such a shitstorm brought on them by people like fucking me. Yeah, little old me. The fat kid from Doncaster, eh? The fat kid from South Yorkshire. They're going to have people like me saying, Fuck you, Eddie. Fuck you, Eddie. I'm telling you now, you can have it this week. Walking around thinking you're a fucking Essex bad man. Jesus. Do you know what I mean? Proper bad man down there at Blundells, not the fucking urns. Fucking Jesus, man. Thinking you're a fucking bad man, Eddie. You think you're an Essex wide boy. Unbelievable. Listen, do you know all them other people as well? Let me tell you this, right? Davy Day. Davy Day were laughing behind the scenes about this. Laughing his head off. Laughing his head off. But yet today, he'll be on the phone to Eddie Earn saying, fucking hell, setbacks paved the way for fucking comebacks. And it is what it is, Eddie, and it's how you come back. And I came back after Carl Thompson beat me. So fucking what? You got beat by Carl Thompson because your, your, your trainer, Adam Booth, were ringing this office here, saying we want Carl Thompson, it's your job to deliver it. Dennis says, do not take that fight against Carl Thompson. You're a 10 and 0 cruiserweight and you're not ready to mix it with the cat. What happened? The alley cat knocked him out, didn't it? You've got to run before you, you've got to, you've got to walk before you can run. Now, let's have a look what we've got here. Oh, emails. Keep them emails coming guys, porkycorner at mail.com. Good or bad, I read them all. But whoever you are, I keep ringing me on a private number. Somebody keeps ringing me on a private number. So obviously somebody's leaked my number out, so I've changed my number from, from this morning, so all of them who've got my number and you still see my face on WhatsApp, you've still got my number, but I have changed it, so, all right? So I'm fed up of people ringing me on we've held numbers at middle at night talking utter nonsense. This is what you're up against. But, no, Joshua is copped it now and Wilder's going to hammer him now, going to hammer him on social media. Hammer him. They're going to hammer it. But mainly, I don't think Wilder and Tyson Fury have a problem with Joshua. I think it's Eddie Earn and how they've all been treated and that. Because Eddie Earn, he does interview after interview after interview. Nobody can shut him up, can they? Right? Probably like me, but he is, is, is a bit more damaging what he says because he's the guy with the keys. Eddie Earn's the bank manager and he's got the keys to the safe. And these boxers, they all want to get into the safe. But to get to the safe, you've got to tickle Eddie's arsehole, haven't you? To get into to get into uh, to get into the safe, you've got to tickle Eddie, haven't you? Tickle his tickle his feet, should I say? You've got to tickle him, haven't you? To get into uh, I'll rephrase that because Nicola will cut that out. You've got to tickle Eddie Earn's feet to get into the bank, and he's like, oh, oh, just tickle him a little bit more. Just tickle him a little bit more, uh, Al Heyman. Tickle my feet, and I'll think about it. I'm just, out, uh, I'm just having a bit of, uh, just having a bit of lunch here at Alex in, uh, in Booker Still Essex. I'm just uh, tickle my feet a bit more, Al, and I'll think about it. Well, he tried to play chess with the master, and he got beat, didn't he? I mean, what sort of promoter takes a British world champion out to defend? In America, eh? Different time zones. 
Hey, eh? Different time zone, different arena, different dressing room, different water you're getting showered in, everything different. Swanning about in private jets. It all come home to roost, didn't it? It all come home to roost. And do you know what? I'm buzzing. I'm gutted for Dillian White because he may never get to fight for a world title now. We all know how boxing goes. He may never fight for a world title, Dillian White, now, unless he gets the Wilder fight, because he's not going to fight for one this year, is he? So, as far as I'm concerned, it's a mess. It's a total mess. But what can you do? It's one of them things, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? It's boxing. But I can't believe I couldn't believe what I saw. I still can't get it out of my head. I still can't get it out of my head what I saw. But yeah, Terry made a good point at Road to Undisputed. Well that's what we're all supposed to be, wasn't it? That's what Eddie was selling us, wasn't he? The Road to Undisputed, Anthony Joshua. Well, didn't we watch that Joshua thing about when he fought Parker? When Joshua fought Parker, Eddie said, it's the road to Undisputed. But we all know that it didn't, it isn't the road to Undisputed. They didn't want to fight Wilder all along. When Wilder was the WBC champion, Joshua was the mandatory. Didn't you know that? But they jumped ship to fight Charlie Martin. Joshua were in the testing program, the WBC. Sorry, Joshua was in the WBC. They brought the testing program out. He had the WBC international belt. They brought the testing program out. I'll tell you when it were. And he and Povetkin ended up getting off, get, uh, getting the slot. Let's have a look. Apps, Google. I'll tell you when it were. Uh, Anthony is Anthony T O N Y is it? Oh yeah, Anthony Joshua. Yeah. What next for the Devon champion who lost his belts and in invincibility? BBC News. Watch Mike Costello's brilliant commentary of Joshua and Andy Ruiz third round. Box rack. Where's his box rack? Oh, here we are. Anthony Joshua box rack. Hello. Uh, so, it is what it is, isn't it? I can't get into it. Someone on my phone. Look, Joshua was WBC international champion, right? That means he's, a cha he's got a belt. They brought the testing program out and he jumped ship. He also jumped in for IBF, didn't he? Was that because they didn't want to be tested all year round with WBC? Or didn't he want to be the mandatory for Wilder? Which one were it? Were it swerving Wilder? Did it, were he swerving Wilder from day one? Or were it swerving a drug test? Either way, there's two swerves there, isn't there? Or were it a two for one? Were they swerving Wilder and getting out at drug test all year round? Or were they just getting out at drug, drug test all year round and and get and swerving Wilder at the same time and getting an IBF shot as, against an easier fight? Because they got Joshua an easier fight, but it's like Terry Chapandama said on his pod last night. He said that uh, Eddie Hearn, and I quote, said, all, all roads lead to undisputed. Well, he had four belts, the WBO, after he just beat Parker. Before that, he had the IBO, IBF, WBA. He got the WBO, so technically, he had four belts. He had two belts to go. The Wilder belt and Ring Magazine were going to put that belt on the line at the time. Because nobody has the Ring Magazine belt at this, at, at this moment. And I don't want to hear all that lineal shit about Tyson Fury, because I've already said to Stig, Stig, I don't want no to do with you unless you change your Fury power name to Stig Power name. Stop what you're doing, be your own man and call your sense Stig Power. And the Stig has listened, so well done Stig. But, but 
boxing after boxing after everything after we will give him the full set with that. Yeah, if listen, if you first man Joshua will be the first man to have all five belts and the ring belt. So if Joshua fights Wilder, he'll get every single belt. If he beats the WBC, if he'd beat Ruiz, he had the chance, didn't he, to have all six belts. And now, who's got the chance to have all six now? Wilder could end up with all six belts and lose them to Fury. And that could be the greatest comeback ever. Tyson Fury will have last for last then, won't he? And they could still sell that fight at Wembley, couldn't they? That's what Eddie's saying. It could still be a big fight. Yeah, it could be, couldn't it? But he's lost that bit of instability. He's lost a bit of sparkle, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's lost that it's lost that bit of sparkle, hasn't it? So do you know what I mean? So it is what it is, isn't it? But uh we'll give him a full set with that as ring met, but we are here in the eighth, eighth world. So yeah, Joshua's just had his eighth world title fight against Ruiz. Eighth. Without the mate, who was he beat really? Eight world title fights, he's gone seven and one. He were lucky against Vladimir, beat him, that's his best win. But we're, we're, that's about it, really. We'll bring it to an end now because we've, we've hammered him, haven't we? Like the Parker, the referee in the in the Parker Joshua fight, you know. You know what I mean? I'm bored talking about him now, to be honest. And it's dinner time, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting bo boxing. Anthony Joshua is a fraud. He's the biggest fraud I've ever seen in boxing. And they got away with it for so long that it's all over now, isn't it? So it's all over. And who knows? He might even he might even end up with MTK now. He might end up like we. He might end up doing MMA fights. <laughs> so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a great sport.